So this guy right here, a guy who quite frankly makes uh, over $200,000 a month on Twitch, who also makes God knows what on YouTube, who we're now finding out was actually a trust fund baby, which most of us already knew that he was. This guy is going to complain about sitting on his butt for nine hours a day and tell us that his job, that his life is soul-sucking? Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. So... Now, granted, that was only about 20 seconds of a clip that, quite frankly, needed greater context. But trust me, when you listen to the full context of what he said, it's actually a lot worse. This job right here that I'm doing right now, sitting in front of my phone with this little light ring thing back here, which still, for whatever reason, maybe it's because it's my face, still does not look 100%, uh, how do I say, as clear as I want it to be. Uh, with a Rode microphone is not that hard of a job. And I'll be talking about that in this video here. And I'm going to prove to you that it's not a hard job by literally taking a Thanos-sized crap on Hassan Piker for the next 15 to 20 minutes. So make sure you guys stick around for the full video. Now, guys, I've done a few videos on Hassan, clowning him, making fun of him. Of course, there's not really anything that I just, <laughs> there's really nothing I agree with this guy on, to tell you the truth. I mean, but then again, at the same time, uh, I think that King of Nothing made a very good video on this. A lot of other people, a lot of other content creators have made very good content on Hassan exposing his hypocrisy. Willie Mack was probably the recently uh, was probably the recent one uh, to get big and blow up as a result of this. But then again, though, if you actually go through the library, you find out that Willie Mack, quite frankly, uh, craps on everybody. Still, at the same time, though, he obviously had good reason to do so. So, sitting on your butt for nine hours a day while getting over $200,000 a month. And by the way, I'm going to be bringing that little graphic up one more time because Asmongold and Asmongold, I have no problem with Asmongold. I really and truly don't. I don't really know about much about him. I think he's known for having much, much more level headed takes, at least up until recently. Uh, but I'm going to be leaving the, these videos right here in the description box for you guys to kind of watch too, because I've kind of looked at some of this that he has said, has decided to take the right of taking up for Hassan. But then again, though, looking at the graphic of how much Twitch streamers were making as of 2021, and seeing that Asmongold is only a few spots below Hassan, it doesn't exactly surprise me looking at it now that he chose to defend Hassan Pikers. Let's just say uh, out of touch take. Now, before I look at this full thing in context, before I actually comment on this, I want you to know something right now. Based upon the current demographic of my channel, based upon the age of my channel, and by the way, I love every single one of y'all. Everybody who subscribed to me, I'm happy you guys did. Of course, I'm a content creator that's taken a long time to even get monetized. I mean, obviously, there are a lot more channels that are larger than mine. I'm not so big that, uh, or I, I'm not so big head that I got to walk around and say, hey, man, you know, that's, that's just not how I am. The thing is this right here. The world of content creation does have its ups and downs, but here's the thing, though. If you have to physically go to work at a job, like if you have to physically drive to work, if you have to physically work construction, for example, or maybe you're a firefighter, a first responder, if you're a police officer, or like my old line of work, being in the military, especially if it's combat arms, MOS, even working retail, which I've worked a lot of in my life, uh, that right there is an actual job. Let me let me let me break it down for you, okay? Let's say you work construction, okay? And let's just say that you go to work and something falls down on your foot. You break your foot. Next thing you know, you got to draw workman's comp, okay? Workman's compensation, depending on what state you're in, may only be two thirds of the actual paycheck that you normally get. Or maybe you're a prison guard and something happens. Maybe you get hurt on the job. Maybe you're a police officer and maybe you uh, you get to a tussle with somebody who is uh, much much more powerful than you, or a drug addict or something like that, and you get hurt. Your family could suffer as a result of you not being at work. Whereas someone like Hassan, on the other hand, he gets to sit in front of his computer for nine hours a day looking at other people's YouTube content while also at the exact same time eating and also to go on top of this, he also gets no DMCA claims or anything put on him, which of course he breaks the copyright scheme constantly. But still, we're not going to mention that because if you mention that, somebody's going to come over here and they're probably going to get triggered and they're probably going to say, it's all biker. Just... We've 
seeing a lot of content on this right here. Hassan Piker gets away with practically murder on this platform. So I don't think anybody uh, in his position should be complaining about anything. Now, I already know somebody who comes across this video and may say, well, what about the fact that he's Jink Younger's nephew and stuff? Don't worry, we will get to that more so towards the end of the video because we have to talk about what it's like to actually try to create an audience. I understand that YouTube can be tedious. I understand it can be time consuming, but uh, given the fact that you've got firefighters who literally get hurt on the job, seeing how it is that you've got police officers who have to deal with thugs, you've got doctors who see all kinds of crazy stuff, you've got nurses out there who, by the way, don't get a fraction of what Hassan Piker gets as far as income is concerned. And you got construction workers, retail workers, you've got people who actually put in actual work, people who actually uh, put their lives on the line for that paycheck, jobs that quite frankly are needed. Because really the truth be told is, this right here is not actually needed. The only reason why guys like myself exist is because the mainstream media does not do its job. What it does is it uh, pollutes the airwaves of propaganda, and of course people have to come out here and fact check exactly what it is that the media says and does. But with that right there being said, let's go ahead and get the full context of this comment. Fucking physical labor, it would not bother me. But I can't fucking do more social shit. That's my point. Like, there are obviously real jobs out there that are good comparisons. Service sector, people-pleasing jobs would be very similar. Those are like, I think, customer service type shit. But like, if you're an accountant or if you're even like in sales, my interactions with clients was limited way more limited than like i almost want to laugh at this guy but at the same time though it, it, it actually just goes to prove what i've always said what i've always felt about this current generation you see these people who claim to be socialist revolutionaries they're not the same as the socialist revolutionaries of the russian revolution or anything like that these right here are people who quite frankly have never been through any kind of grind and these are also the same people who get pissed off if you just misgender them or misgender somebody else these people aren't exactly what we call tough physically, mentally, or emotionally. And Hassan Piker is just a good old-fashioned example of it. But let me go ahead and say something else, too. Hassan has misled people his entire life, especially with this whole socialism shtick, especially given the fact all the, uh, let's just say, uh, the lifestyle he lives is contradictory to the whole socialism message that he preaches. So, yeah, the guy's a great big giant hypocrite, and obviously he's a weakling, now, too. you guys obviously heard some of that, and don't worry, we'll play the rest of it here in a second. Now, let me say this. I said this earlier, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of reiterate it right now. Hassan Piker is sitting in front of a computer for nine hours a day. Nine hours a day, watching other people's content. That's not really work, dude. I mean, you're getting paid for it, yeah, but it, it's, it's, it's not really work. Let's go through Hassan Piker's life really quick. So Hassan Piker was born in Turkey. He was raised in Turkey. Um, he was sent here to the United States by his family, came to the U.S. He went to Rutgers University, worked in sales, tried YouTube. It did not work out for him the first time. He was actually one of those uh, date, dating, dating bro type guys at first. It didn't work out for him. I'm not here crapping on him over that because even his first channel got a lot more success than my channel here. But still at the same time, though, and don't worry, we'll have some updates at the end of the video because I told you guys earlier this week I was going to put some in every video. Uh, but And, of course, some of this stuff is going to be going to that point that I'm going to be talking about, so make sure you guys stick around. Uh, the thing is this right here. Uh, he eventually would go work at TYT for his uncle. His uncle, Jane Younger. You know this guy here? Largest political platform on YouTube, left-wing platform. Uh, of course, not that many people are watching it that much anymore because people figured out that they're a bunch of frauds and they're not exactly good at telling the truth. But that's kind of how Hassan Piker got the largest section of his audience was through TYT. So he can thank his uncle for that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do like Sean Fitzgerald and just start saying Jinx nephew, even though he quite frankly is Jinx nephew. But still, though, he got by because Jinx is uncle. Okay, that, that, that's one of the main reasons why Hassan got by. And also not to mention the fact that he lives in a $3 million mansion. I'm also showing you guys some stuff here in the B-roll footage. This is back when he got called out by, uh, by Sam Hyde. I don't even think this guy puts out even when he works out because Hassan released a video in response to him kicking a bag, but you can clearly see that the bag is being pushed more so into his legs. So he isn't even putting into any effort there, which automatically makes me think that uh, the mere fact that these uh, trust fund babies who have never actually been through the grind, and don't worry, we'll probably do a bigger video at a later date on this, it, it, it kind of shows you exactly their resolve when they're actually pushed, when they're actually put into a bad spot. 
Hassan Piker is no tough guy, and him complaining about this entire situation or his entire life being soul sucking is absolutely hilarious. But let's watch social the rest battery of it. in the same fucking way as someone who did a sales job, a real job. Okay, I'm telling you, as someone who did did both, like. Nine hours of of constant performance and people pleasing taps you out way more limited than like constantly having to do this for nine hours with like a back and forth interaction for nine hours. That's what that's what like sucks your your social battery and you just tap out after it. Yeah, think about it this way. Like um, you give presentations for your job, right? Imagine giving a presentation for nine hours straight. It's like, after a while, you'd be like, I don't want to talk ever no. again. <laughs> Social battery-wise, unless you're in retail, unless you're in fucking retail, it's very different. You're out of touch with my, I'm going to die, dude. There's motherfuckers who are accountants in here, and they're misunderstanding what I'm saying. A real job does not expend your social battery in the same fucking way as someone who did a sales job, a real job, okay? I'm telling you, as someone who did, did both, like, nine hours of, of constant performance. There is absolutely nothing soul-sucking about this job. Tedious, maybe, time-consuming, yes. But then again, at the same time, man, nobody told his fat ass to sit behind a computer for nine hours and watch other people's videos. I mean, if I was getting paid like a thousand bucks just to do that for like a week, which is not even close to, well, it would be, but still at the same time, though, he gets paid over $200,000 a month just to do that. And like I said before, he doesn't even get DM DMCA claims. Okay, I mean, there was actually a controversy about that recently. The fact of the matter is that Hassan Piker's got absolutely nothing to complain about. People who work real jobs, people who actually have to physically go to work every day, have to actually provide for their family, are not getting paid anywhere near the amount of money Hassan Piker's getting paid. Those people right there are the ones who've actually had the tough job. Nothing soul-sucking about Hassan Piker at all. Now, I will be talking about the tediousness of this a little bit more towards the end of the video, which we're about to get to here soon. But the thing is, this right here. YouTube can be time consuming, yes. YouTube can be aggravating, yes. YouTube's algorithm can be punishing, yes. But the fact of the matter is that this job right here allows you basically the freedom to do whatever it is that you want to do. Some people just go about it different ways. You get to post whenever you want. You get to stream whenever you want. Dude, there are people out there who can literally take their phone and do a live stream while they're simply walking in the neighborhood. You can basically work whatever you want. You don't have to actually set physical hours, even though you can. Like me, me for example, I do as well. And I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. But the thing is this right here. It's not a soul-sucking job in the world. If anything, it's probably the best job in the world that you can actually have. So any types of complaints from Hassan Piker, they just fall on deaf ears because of, well... Way from social democracy in the short term, socialism in the long term. Like, it's literally always been what I've advocated for. Hassan bases his entire internet personality around pretending to be a socialist while simultaneously feeding off of donations and begging for subscriptions from those who make far less money than he does while living in a $3 million mansion in LA just to criticize others who live live in three million dollar mansions dude this is like unimaginable wealth dude how the fuck do people make this much money 2.9 million dollars near las vegas dude oh my fucking lord dude what what the fuck and driving a 2022 porsche instead of you know giving back to those who might actually need it just look at how nervous the grifter gets when even just the concept of charity is brought up. This is a reminder, you don't have to wait for your favorite orgs to donate to charity. Go ahead and find your own favorite charity, such as, uh, what's one of your favorites, Hassan? I like Gamers Outreach. Uh, Hassan <laughs> spent all that money on a house, so he's not been giving the charity recently. part about him being a complete, total cheapskate uh, says everything you need to know. The guy is a complete, total phony. I mean, he's a fake. I mean, the, the eat the rich or the tax the rich shirt, of course, the amount of money that uh, he's making. And of course, by his audience, which is mostly people under the age of 18 aren't making any money at all. 
he's quite frankly very, very much a hypocrite, okay? That's the real truth about Hassan Piker, okay? So him complaining about this, him, him bitching and complaining and saying that his job is soul-sucking when he can basically do whatever he wants whenever he wants and getting paid over $200,000 a month and whatever else comes from YouTube, it's, it's absolutely laughable. So, yeah, he's got egg on his face. People are making fun of it. And people are obviously... Uh, People are obviously trolling him over this for good reasons, but, but let me go ahead and say one last thing before I get to some updates. It's about audience creation. The thing about YouTube is this right here. You have to organically create your audience. Most content creators have to do this. Me, for example, I started doing this through my phone, and I made a lot of very big-time mistakes early on by deleting videos and stuff. When you do that, you actually ruin your algorithm and your algorithmic timing, okay? So there'll be people out there who say, no, that doesn't do anything to hurt your channel. No, no, it, it, it does. By the way, I've even had to physically work some jobs too while actually doing this, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in the update section. But the thing is, it's right here. You get to basically do this whenever the hell you want, all right? And Hassan Piker has had every single advantage in the world given to him. Rich family, wealthy family, got to go to college, worked a very, very cushy job in sales, worked on YouTube, his uncle gave him a job, his audience was built through TYT, mostly because of his uncle, and he's complaining about sitting behind a computer for nine and a half days, uh, excuse me, nine and a half hours a day. Yeah, this guy right here is completely and totally full of crap, and obviously he deserves the uh, the heat that he's getting at this moment in time. Now, with that right there being said, let me go ahead and kind of get to these updates so that way you guys can kind of know what the hell's going on over here. Uh, I sent a video on Monday that I was going to probably put updates in every single video this week due to what's going to be going on over the next couple of weeks. So make sure you guys stick around. Now, I know I just complained about Hassan Piker for roughly 15 to 20 minutes about uh, his job being so sucking and why it is he's got to complain about. Uh, the content is probably going to be changing a little bit here, not in direction or what I'm being doing, but probably the overall presentation. There's not going to be as many videos posted starting next week. This area back here is going to look a little bit different. I'm probably going to start doing more videos in the corner, especially videos where I've got to be in front of the camera. But here's something else too that's going on. There is one aspect of YouTube that can be aggravating, but it's also fun too. And that right there is the actual research of the videos themselves, especially for those projects. Now, I've been saying for a while that we're going to be going to video essays about media manipulation and crime and stuff like that. And of course we are. Now, granted, it's also an election year, so therefore I've also got to provide you guys some updates on what's going on. And, of course, crime and immigration is obviously a very, very big staple of this channel. I've been talking about it a lot recently. There's going to be a lot more content on that, so go ahead and expect more and more crime and immigration topics going forward, especially out of New York and Chicago, because that's kind of the epicenters of what's going on in the country right now, especially given the fact that immigration is going to kind of be the big issue this year. But the thing is this right here. There's going to be less overall content, but it's going to be much, much larger and much, much more detailed. It kind of goes to what's going on as far as video essays are going to be on this channel going forward. Let me give an example of what I mean. Gear Issue 33, my second channel, my military-related channel, I'm not posted there like I wanted to, okay? Oftentimes, what I'll do is I'll try to put one video out a week on that channel. And, of course, I'm trying to go into video essays for military film reviews and military history. We're officially starting back this week. It's probably going to have a trailer that's going to be released and then the actual video review. And we'll be reviewing the film Rambo 2. But there's another channel that I'm creating called, um, yeah, I was going to call it Disassociative Indifference, but I'm going to be calling it uh, Solidus's Visions or Visions from Solidus instead. It's going to be basically commentary through film, what to expect going forward, of course, what the films, what the stories say to us. I'll give you guys more info on that through the week as we go forward and probably for the first video channel, because obviously there's going to be a trailer that's going to go to that channel. I'm not going to be posting anything to it right now. But I'm going to be doing a lot of work between those two channels, especially because what I want to do is create four or five videos and then get them all released over a said period of time. So that way it's easier for me to actually control the content. And it's also better to do it that way. So that way you've got a bit of a collection. So if you notice some very, very strange stuff over the next few weeks, especially given the fact that Monday is kind of now a writing day for me. And of course, Friday will also be included as well because of the... Um, Let's just say the stuff that's going to be going on around the apartment because they've already started the landscaping thing is going to be continuing all the way through into late this year. But I need to give you guys a bit of a heads up on this. You guys know me. I always try to give you guys a heads up and an update on what's going on. With that right there being said, guys, please tell me what you think in the comment section. Please hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, sound off in the comment section. I'll see you guys later. I'm I'm coming to kill you in Los Angeles at your house. Or in the ring. No, in real life, I'm going to stalk him and become obsessed with him.
and wear his makeup and his dress.